Hey everybody, welcome back to the wood shop. You know, one of the great things about having your own wood shop is creating personal gifts for those you love. My mom's birthday's coming up in a couple of weeks and we've decided to make her a hanging wall clock out of pallet wood. For this, we're gonna be using some maple and some walnut, so I believe it's time to get started. Now the clock motor we bought for this project has a half inch shaft on it, so we're gonna plane these boards down to a half inch. Now that we have all of our boards plain good and smooth, we're going to edge join them and cut them all to 2 inches wide and 12 inches long. Alright, now that all the pieces for our clock have been cut to length and width, we're going to glue the joints together, clamp it up, and we're going to construct a little box on the back to kind of encase the motor, and we're also going to use that to install the hanger for the clock. Well, now we have everything all glued and nailed together. The next step is to drill a hole directly in the center of this for the clock motor. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is sand our clock. And we're gonna start with some 80 grit sandpaper and step it up to 120. When we get done with that, we're gonna take this over to the table saw and miter off the corners. It's gonna look really sweet. Now that our clock has been sanded good and smooth, we're going to miter off all four corners at 45 degrees. All right, we're getting in the home stretch. We get to put a little bit of finish on our clock now. We are going to use some Danish oil. It is one of our favorite things um, to use. And it's in a natural finish, so um, the beauty of this wood will really get to shine through. Originally, uh, when we put this panel together, we thought that we would do like a horizontal layout. But after cutting the miters, we really think that it looks better uh, running vertically. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and get this Danish oil applied and see how this turns out. Well, now we've given our Danish oil time to soak in and dry good. Now comes the hard part. So we're going to be painting the numbers on this clock. And we purchased um, some stencils from Amazon. 
There was a variety. We really like this style the best. And as you can see, I've already got some paint on this stencil because I've been doing some practice on a scrap piece of wood. Um, one of the important things to remember when you're using stencils is to be very gentle, very light. Um, I purchased some sponges and I'll show you how we're going to do it. We are going to use black. We also have black hands for this clock and we think it's going to look really nice. All right, one thing that I do want to talk about is earlier we had decided to go with a vertical run um, on this clock. And we hung it on the wall and decided that really didn't look the best. So we're going to stick with a horizontal layout. And what we've done to start is marked where we want the 12, the 3, the 6, and the 9. And then that, once we get those in place, that's going to give us a gauge to run our 30 degree measurements for the rest of the numbers on our clock. So let's go ahead and get started. The great thing about 12 is 1 and 2 are right together on this stencil. So that's kind of nice. And get it all lined up here. I'm going to try to get this uh, pressed down as much as I can. And like I said earlier, we are going to just be super gentle and I'm hoping this makes me a little nervous because I've lost my dot and I just want to make sure that that 12 is nice and centered. <laughs> really gentle, just some nice light taps. And then we'll go back in and get some more paint as we need it. As you can see, I'm just doing an up and down motion. I'm really careful that this doesn't bleed. So we're just going to keep going around the clock, stenciling all our numbers, and we'll be back to install the hardware. Alright, now that we have our 12, 3, 6, and 9 uh, in place, they're painted on, we're going to use this little angle finder to figure out um, 30 degrees at a time. That's where every number should fall, um, would be 30 degrees. So we're going to use this and go all the way around and mark them. And we're going to keep them evenly uh, spaced from the center by using this board. We just drove a screw in the middle of it and we're going to measure 4 inches out from the center. All right, now that all the numbers are painted on our clock face, we installed a sawtooth picture hanger on the back to hang it with. And the next thing we're going to do is hit this with a little spray lacquer. Well, we put a couple of coats of lacquer on our clock, got it shining real good, buffed it out with some craft paper to get all the dust and particles off of it. And now it's time for the fun part. Absolutely. Uh, we have a motor here. We ordered this off Amazon. It actually came in a two pack with a variety of different hands. So whatever style you're looking for, um, you can find it there, trust me. So it's pretty inexpensive. Like I said, it is a uh, quartz motor. It'll tell time really well. And it's high torque, is that right? right. So. Um, it's going to make these little hands go and tell us what time it is. So let's get this put together.
Well, there it is. Mom's birthday gift is finished. It's a pallet wood clock with an alternating pattern of maple and walnut. We think it turned out really great and we hope she loves it. I have to hand it to you. I've had a really great time today. And we hope you've had a great time too. If so, be sure to like and subscribe and ring the bell. We're also on Facebook, so meet us over there. And we're on the World Wide Web, www.woodsongsbyrussell.com. Thanks again for joining us today. Happy woodworking!